Okay, everything should be fixed. You guys and gals ready? Let's do a latency check right here. You ready? When I snap my fingers, type one. So get ready to type one. I'm gonna snap my fingers and then just type one. Here we go in three, two, one. There we go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one. Boom. Four second delay. We're good. We got this. Let's over to me. I think Mubot's here. Mubot, you still here? Mubot, we need to reset Mubot. Let's get Mubot up and going. He crashes the universe every time. Universe Breaker, Mubot. So let's get started right here. Jump back in the game real quick. If you have not, we're going to get started here in 30 seconds. Sorry for the delay right there, everybody. And sorry for the errors right there. But we have everyone back in the game right now. So let's get started here in five, four, three, two, one. Start time. Let's do this. The first question this week is, a teacher assumes that a student has not cheated to start. A student gets away with cheating is a what? So the student gets away with cheating. What kind of error is this? They start out believing that the student has not cheated. Now there's only two answers here. Oh my gosh, please don't make like the right one. Did I put the right one on here? For some reason, I think I clicked the wrong one. Because I have a way I do it. I'm half asleep today. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> I have a way of doing this. Two seconds. Everybody, we have to restart the Kahoot. And I'm very sorry. That is a wrong answer right there. I knew it. Sorry about that. We are restarting the Kahoot. Today is just one of those crazy days. Let me fix that because I knew I was like, I always put it a certain way. And let me edit this real quick. Everyone gets that free point right there and everyone was getting it correct, but that'll majorly mess up the scores. I have a way I do my Kahoots. And I was like, no. And I was like, I know the answer. And I was like, don't let that be. Okay. Third, what do they say? Third time's the charm. Oh my gosh, everybody. Okay, third time is a charm. <laughs> it's type two, it's type two. Let me turn on the errors. Okay, we're gonna wait for the 13 people to join again, and then we're gonna go completely error free. Oh my gosh, everybody. Today is just one of those crazy days. Today's just one of those crazy days. Let's do this correctly, you ready? No more errors. And we'll go over why it's a type two error. So there's gonna be some free points right here. Get ready. It should be saved. Can you put the question up again or is it stuck in the chat? The question should come back up here in a second. Is everyone back in the game? We had about 13 people. We'll wait till the next person joins and then we're gonna have no more mistakes. No more mistakes from Brian today. I put the wrong delay and I had a wrong answer. Every other answer should be correct. But I was thinking when I wrote that one, I was like, I know the way I wrote it. I had a memory of, did I click the right answer? So let's talk about this one as we bring it up. Join the game here with five seconds to go. No more errors from Brian. That looks like a phone number. So is everyone ready? We're going back to our first Kahoot where I confused myself and I confused uh, Julio. We're gonna get started here in three, two, one. Here we go, let's do it. So everyone already knows what the first question is. Here it goes. The first question is, a teacher assumes that a student has not cheated to start. A student getting away with cheating is a what? A student getting away with cheating. So what is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that the student did not. <laughs> well, everyone is really smart today. Gosh, that's amazing. I am astounded with how quickly everyone knew that answer. The null hypothesis, is, and let's write this down to make it make sense, because there are a few people saying, well, how did you know that? So the null hypothesis is here. I know that is amazing if everyone knows it like that on the test. I just did this so you'll never forget that question. So the null hypothesis is not cheat. The alternative would be cheat. Does this make sense to everybody over here? The null is that they did not cheat. Um, oh, totally. I will totally send you that, Tyler. I will definitely send it to you. I'll make it and I'll send it to you so you can, you can show some people. Um, so the null is that they did not cheat. The alternative is that they did cheat. So in a type one error, what is true? 
in a type one error, what is true? In a type one error, what is true? We're gonna do type one first. In a type one error, what is true? In a type one error, what is true? Careful, Andrew, with the accept. You're really close, Andrew. Andrew, you basically got it. In a type one, the null is true, but we are gonna reject it and have evidence for the alternative. So in a type one, what would happen in a type one right here? In a type one, in a type one, the null is true and we reject it and we have evidence for the alternative. So in a type one, a student will have not cheated. It's true they did not cheat. That is true that they did not cheat, but we reject the null and say we have evidence that they cheated. A type one is saying a student cheated when they did not. In a type two, the null is false, but what do we do to the null even though the null is false? So in a type two, and remember how we do this, in a type two, the null is false. And we what? In a type two, it is false. And we what? Think of the second F. In a type two, the null is false. And we fail to reject. Memorize this. In a type one, the null is true. And we reject. And this is the T and the one. In the type one, there's the one. The null is true. That's a T. And we reject. In a type two, the null is false. And we fail to reject. There's your two Fs right there. So this is what we were talking about in this scenario, that in a type two error, the null is false, meaning that the student not cheating is false. So they did cheat, but we failed to reject the null. So we continue to believe they did not cheat. So the student would get away with cheating because it's true that they cheated. Does this make sense to everybody right here? Does everyone see how this would be a type two error because we failed to reject the null? This will come up later. It's in a later question also. So be prepared. This is going to be a really competitive Kahoot. Oh my gosh. I'm really wondering who's going to win. We got some former students here. Current Dabo Thor is no match. Let's see who is Witty Eagle. Oh, wow. It took people like 0.7 seconds. That's still, look at this, a tie in second place between Captain Quail. Captain Quail? Wait a minute. Isn't Captain Quail from Doug? Captain Quail, right? Quail Man, Quail Man. I'm thinking of Quail Man, not Captain Quail. Quail Man. And Lively Lemur, Lively Lemur. Let's continue on here to the next one. Let's see who wins. UT wants to investigate the amount, the average amount spent at Walmart a semester. What test would they use? So UT wants to look at the average amount spent at Walmart a semester. What would they use? What will they use? So the average amount is a what kind of variable? Ooh, we have some differences of answers here. When do we use a proportion test? When do we use a proportion test? He, Francis sometimes returns. When do we use a proportion test? When do we use proportions? So type one is we end up proving, the, not that we prove the null. Type one is when we reject the null, null is true. And type two, and then we never prove anything with statistics. We never prove anything with statistics. Type one is rejecting the null when it is true. So it's a mistaken rejection of the null. And type two is not rejecting a false null. And Andrew is right right here that proportions are for categorical and T. What do we say about Mr. T? Mr. T is what? I'm sure he's a nice guy, but what do we say about Mr. T? I'm sure he's a super nice guy. I'm sure Mr. T is a really nice guy, but what do we say about Mr. T? He's mean. I'm sure he's super nice. I'm sure he's super nice. Sorry, Mr. T. But we say Mr. T is Mr. T is mean because T tests deal with the mean. That's just a way to memorize it. Mr. T, super nice dude. Um, I slipped in points for being slow, but at least I was right. Exactly. So Mr. T is mean, and this is dealing with two means right here. This would be two means right here. So you have a two sample T test. We haven't done chi squared or two sample T test yet, but these are things we will be doing. And when we do proportions, proportions are categorical. So they're looking at the average amount spent at Walmart. So this is a quantitative question. So we are going to use the T test. Who's winning right here? Oh, wait, that's a cool graphic, right? <laughs> Who's winning? Oh my gosh, that's a shakeup of the leaderboard if I ever saw one right here. Lively Lemur in the lead. We got people with perfect scores right here. Let's see if the streak continues. Francis, what do you think, Francis? Got these over here. I don't know if I'm looking at them or not. Let's see what we got. What can they use to graph the distribution of how much is spent? First place, love it. What the, can they use to graph the distribution of how much is spent? Now there's two answers on the screen that work. And this question right here could be on the tools and techniques question. Just... Francis flew away. 
So there's two answers here that work for univariate quantitative. There's two answers here that work for univariate categorical. And so the two answers that work for univariate quantitative are histograms and box plots. There we go. So a bar chart, remember, how do we memorize? What is our saying for bar charts and pie charts that make us put them together? You can do a what of your favorite what's, and you can do a what of your favorite what's. And then that tells you what kind of data bar, ch bar charts and pie charts are used for. Because you could ask people this. Exactly, yeah. And so that's Tyler, you're right. The project's good help for this too, because the project goes over this kind of stuff. And so you can make a what are your favorite what and a what are your favorite what. You can make a pie chart your favorite bars and a bar chart your favorite pies. Exactly. So you can ask someone what's your favorite pie or you can ask someone what's your favorite bars. And if you're asking that, it's a categorical question. That's the way we memorize, you know, what kind of data we're dealing with. I, who would have thought that person who wrote that joke for how I met your mother that, you know, be like, hey, I'm going to be using this in statistics class one day to like tell people, you know, this is how we deal with certain types of data, but it works. And how I met your mother still stands up. Watched an episode lately. Such an amazing show. One of those timeless shows. The Who game is competitive. I know. Look at this. Holy mackerel. This is like an all-star Kahoot right here. But Tyler, if you're lively lemur, you're running away. You're 100 points up on this right now. But Andrew is saying it's going to get harder and we're going to see who's going to win right here. So let's continue on and keep asking those questions. We usually go into 30 minutes on Kahoot's, but we got this. Let's keep going. Let's ask the big questions. What three things control the power of a statistical test? What three things... So you can pick any of the three out here, so be quick. There's only one wrong answer. Everyone's pausing. There's only one wrong answer, and people are gonna, you're gonna pick the wrong answer, and be like, no! And there's a big review one after this. I'll be going through this. Oh, wow, no one picked the wrong answer, nice. So what do we have here, sample size? Sample size is first, which is how large of a sample did we take? The three things, as you saw right there, that control the power of a test. Does anyone know the equation? No review. <laughs> Does anyone know the equation for power? Does anyone know the equation for the power of a test? Does anyone know the equation for the power of the test? What is the equation for power? This is one of my beta. Nice job right there, Dan. That's like, this is like one of the last things we said in class. So power equals one minus beta. And that's what power is equal to. And when you look at these right here, the way it works is sample size, effect size, and alpha are all inversely related to beta. So if these go up, beta goes down, but if beta goes up, power, power if beta goes down, power goes up. So how does sample size affect the power of a test? So think about this just briefly. If you wanted to detect if UT students, um, let's say, have a higher IQ than Florida students, sorry, Florida, would you would it be easier to figure this out if you took a sample of five students or 100 students? Would it be easier to figure this out if you took a sample of five or 100 students? Which of those would be easier to see that UT students are smarter than Florida students? Because we are, apparently. <laughs> I think we're all right to make it for Florida. 100, and this is an increased sample size. Um, when we have a larger sample size, so, well, 100 would make it easier to detect the results. So when you think about it, it's not that the results will be more accurate. It's, let's say this, um, you go to the doctor and they want to take vials of blood to do tests. Would it be easier to them, for them to find an issue if they took uh, a droplet of blood or 10 vials, which that's a lot, that sounds ridiculous, but let's say when would it be easier for the doctors to find an issue if one exists with one droplet of blood or 10 vials of blood, 10 vials. So what we're doing right here is we're increasing the sample size. It's not making it more accurate, so to say. It's making it more that they can actually figure out results if results exist. If there's an issue, they'll figure it out with a larger sample size. It makes the test more what? A larger sample size would make the test more what? I.e. able to reject the null when the null is false. It'd make the test more what to have a larger sample size. The test would become more what? And this word is the ability to reject the false null, i.e. find results when they exist. The test would become more, the word's on the screen here somewhere. If we have a larger sample size, the test would become more powerful. What does power mean? Power is not making a type two error. Does everyone see how power is the complement of making a type two error? What might the doctor do if they only took one droplet of blood? you might get a false what. If the doctor only took one droplet of blood, 
you might get a false what with the doctor. You might get a false what if you go to the doctor and they take probably not a false positive. So they only take the tiniest bit of blood from you and they don't find any issues, I'm guessing, with that, a false negative. Does that make sense why they might find a false negative? Because if they take only a little, they might not find anything. And so if they take more, they're more likely to find something if something exists. And so what is beta? What is beta? Beta is literally your what error rate. Beta is literally your what error rate. Beta is beta. <laughs> Um, but what if there's nothing to find, then it, it would still be a powerful test and just wouldn't find results. And no, you're right, Andrew. If there's nothing to find, then, <laughs> then they would just wouldn't find results. And beta is the probability of making a type two error. And then what is power? Power is not making type two errors. Does that make sense? So when you think about what power is, it's the ability to reject the null when the null is false. So if you do have an issue, a powerful test will find it. A powerful test could also be one that makes type one errors because it will find issues even if they don't exist. And that's where we're dealing with what? When would the test find errors even if they don't exist? Like how could you make a test too powerful using this notation right here and you would actually make type one errors? You'd make a lot more type one errors by doing this. How could you make a test really powerful but it would lead to type one errors? And that's exactly the definition of power right there, the probability of correctly rejecting the false null. So when you have an issue, the test can define, decide it, it can detect it. And how could we make the test really powerful, but it would have a lot of type one errors? How could we make the test really powerful, but it would have a lot of type one errors? How could we do that? Reverse, reverse right there. So if we, you're really close right there, Andrew, we can increase alpha. Alpha is your type one error rate. So alpha is type one errors and beta is type two errors. So by increasing alpha, you will decrease beta, but you'll increase your type one error rates. So imagine this, what if you walk into the doctor and they just say, hi, good to meet you, you're sick. Would the doctor find every sick person if you walk into the doctor, you don't do any blood tests or anything, doctor says, hi, good to meet you, you're sick. Would the doctor find every single sick person then? Would they find every single sick person? If you walk in, they just say, hi, good to meet you. You're sick. They would, but they'd make a lot of what's. If they say it to every single person who walks in the door, you walk in there and say, hi, good to meet you. You're sick. They'd make a lot of what? What errors would they make? They would make a ton of type one errors. The type one errors here would be false positives. But think about this. Would they fail to find someone who, who is sick? Would they make any type two errors here? They'd make no type two errors because every single person would either be correctly diagnosed as sick or they'd make a type one error. Does this make sense to everybody right here? That if you increase your type one errors, your type two errors go down. The only other thing right here is effect size. When we talk about effect size, effect size would literally be in this circumstance, how sick you are. When is it easier? And <laughs> there would be a lot of panic. There would definitely be Dan, you're totally right. When, what do, you, what do you think would be a bigger effect size? Someone walks into the doctor with a cough or somebody is brought into the doctor on a stretcher. Which do you think is a bigger effect size? Someone walks into the doctor with a cough or someone walks into the doctor on a stretcher. Doesn't walk in, but is is brought in on a stretcher. What do they call it? They, like if you're in lateral, I guess. On a stretcher, exactly. They could switch the null, they could switch it. And so with this right here, that's a bigger effect size and it'd be easier to detect when somebody is very sick. So when someone is very sick, it'd be easier to detect and there'd be a lot less false negatives. They're not gonna, if you come in on a stretcher and you're bleeding or you're in pain and they're not gonna be like, ah, oh, there's nothing going on right here. But if you come in with a cough, they could give you a type one error right there. <laughs> you should see the other guy, <laughs> love it, love it. So these three things right here, effect size is the difference between the null and the truth. If you assume someone is healthy, but they're super sick, that's a big effect size. If you assume someone is healthy and they only have a cough, that's a very small effect size. The sample size is how much sample we take. The larger the sample size, the easier it is to find results. And the alpha level is how willing we are to reject the null. And alpha level is the type one error rate. And it's usually 0.05. I think, does this make more sense to people? How all of these are inversely related to beta. And then beta is the inverse of power. So power is the inverse of beta. And so if you increase any of these, like you could do a shorthand right here, 
the test will become more powerful. So any of these increasing, larger effect size, more powerful test, larger sample size, more powerful test, larger alpha, more powerful test. So all of these right here are related to a more powerful test. Who is winning? Ooh, Groovy Hen jumping up right there, but Lively Lemur still in the lead. Let's see who wins here. A 95% comp score goes from 70 to 78. What does this mean for the value 67? And I'm not blocking the right answer. I'm always like, did I select the right answer when I did it? <laughs> Which one of these does it mean? Ah, we only tricked one person there. That's kind of good. So anything inside of a uh, confidence roll can be uh, not rejected. Or yeah, we wouldn't reject it. We fail to reject it. Anything outside the interval, we reject. What kind of test would this relate to? A 95% confidence roll is related to a what kind of tailed test with what alpha level? A 95% confidence interval is related to a what? So if we have a 95% confidence roll, goes from here to here, 95% on the inside, what kind of test is that related to? Let's see. A two-tailed test, great job right there, Alan. Alan, let's thank you, moderator. So good to have you here, Alan. A two-tailed test, and so it's the does not equals test, and then the alpha for this would be equal to point Oh, five. I love these test questions on the test. If you know how to do it, it's pretty easy. If it says like, what's the relative alpha level? It's just one minus it. So it's the outside of it. So it's a pretty easy one when you see it a few times to be like, oh, it's the two tailed test that does not equals test. Um, the dove for Brian, exactly. Thank you guys. So I love all our quotes. Still such easy question though, Brian. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's like I, the visuals really help me. We were visual learners a lot of times, at least I am. So when you see the visual for it, it's like, okay, 95% on the inside. Um, what is the one tailed test? So the one tailed test, so technically speaking, technically you can use, you can use the interval for a one tailed test. We'll do a technical thing right here. So you could use a one tailed test. Here's a one tailed test less than, and you could use it like this. We don't usually talk about it this way. Don't expect this on the test, but thank you so much chat right there. Chat, we are a stat nation. We help each other out. And here is a greater than test. So these are the one tailed tests. One tailed tests are the less than or greater than test. And the two tailed test is the does not equals test. So he does not equals test. Oh. <laughs> the two tailed test. That's a, that's, that's a different quote. Quote with a question mark might do something. So when dealing with the alternative hypothesis, uh, yes, exactly, exactly. This is the sign for the alternative, Dan. This is the sign for the alternative. So the sign for the alternative is going to be the way we do the tails of the test. So the two-tailed test is the does not equals, the less than test is a one-tailed test, and the greater than test is a one-tailed test. So let's put it right here. This is a one-tail, one-tail, two-tail, and this is a confidence interval right here. And the confidence interval directly relates to the two-tailed test, like the complement of it. But I think uh, Daniel was pointing out in our chat, I think during class, that you could technically use it for a, a half alpha less than test or greater than test. So you could use it that way. It is possible. Um, it just doesn't equate perfectly. So we'll do the next one right here. Love it. Tyler and Andrew battling it out. Lively Lemur still in the lead by 200 points. Tyler, if that's you, I'm, gonna, I'm voting on Arctic Tiger because that sounds cool. Like I'd like an Ar Arctic Tiger. Let's do this right here. Let's see who's going to win. Next question. Which is a proper null hypothesis? Oh, I liked this question a lot. I saw one of these a lot on the project. I saw this all the time. And the good news is, is the test is not written. So I probably won't see this on the test. But I saw one of these a lot on the test. I mean, on the project. I've been helping people with the project. I'm going to try to respond to more emails tonight. I've been pretty up to date on emails. But one of these I saw a lot. And I was like, no, it happens every semester. Let's see. What does the null always have? What does the null always have? Oh, no, you're fine, Andrew. Don't worry. No, send me as many emails as you got, people. What is the null? The null always has the equal sign. So all of these have the equal sign. I thought, you know, you're like, dang it. Null always has equal sign. That's So you know the null has equal sign. But what is this right here? This is the what mean. 
So this is the what mean. This is the what mean right here. And so far, we've only learned mu or p. You are correct. This is the sample mean. This is the true mean. So we can only put things here like the true mean for the null. And let's see, people might watch these later. I hope these are good reviews for people. Uh, a lot of people have said they've done well in the test. I've been watching the Kahoot. So I'm hoping to put as much good information as I can out here. I kind of pick my questions to be like, okay, these are the questions I think I can kind of like explain and give people good tips on. So far, mu naught. Oh, wait, I'm losing my mind. Mu p mu one minus mu two. And this will be mu naught. And this will be p naught. And this is always usually zero for us. So thank you so much. I'm glad they're amazing help. Um, thanks for you're welcome. Do you mind if I ask you a question about the project? Yeah, of course, of course. Feel free to ask. Okay, I am on a four answer streak. How did I drop? No, Dan. So why why did we pick mu right here? Why did we pick mu and then a hypothesized value? And we must be dealing with quantitative data. In this instance, we'll be dealing with categorical data. And this is when we're dealing with two means right here. So make sure you kind of know these formats right here. You're not going to use them all at one time. I did see projects where people used all of them, but a proper null could be something like this right here. That'd be a proper null. And then as soon as we write the null, what is the only thing that changes for the alternative? What is the only thing that changes for the alternative? What is the only thing that changes for the alternative? The sign, exactly. So Y bar is not valid, correct? Because Y bar is not a population parameter. All of these right here are population parameters. Technically, you could uh, put right here, this is a proper null hypothesis. Um, this right here is that the true standard deviation is equal to 4.2. So it kicked you out of the game. You should be able to rejoin. You should be able to rejoin, Tyler. You should be able to rejoin. I have no idea why it would kick you. This is not proper. Why is this not a proper null? Why is this not a proper null? Why is this right here not a proper null? I'll put the code back on the screen in a second. Why is this not a proper null? Because it uses S. And what is S? S is what? S is not a proper null. Tell me if you can join here, Tyler. There's the code right there. So, so tell me, we'll make sure Tyler's back in the game. He should be able to get back in. Tyler, I might give you, if you can't join Tyler, I think I might give you $10 because you were in first. I might give you half the prize. Email me on the, if you don't get back in, I'll give you half the prize no matter what. Because that's definitely not fair. We will do a. So Tyler, tell me if it's working. If well, I think I'm blocking the number now. There's the number. Is it working, Tyler? Might have put you in as like a new name. We will see if we can get Tyler back in. And then we'll continue on. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Cool, Tyler. Cool, cool. Well, let's continue on. No, it's you you got the question wrong. I just kicked you. It's like too bad, too bad. So here we go. Lively lemur, no. Not so lively anymore. No. Arctic wait a minute. Wasn't I betting on Ar Arctic Tiger? Did I do this? Did I have a hand in this? Let's find out what the next question. I didn't. Let's find out what the next question right here. Wait, it says I am in a place, so maybe there's a chance. Yes. Let's continue on right here. Let's see. Next question, be quick, be quick. Which is a proper alternative hypothesis? Which of these is a proper alternative hypothesis? I kind of alluded to it with the last question. I gave some hints. I'll know what question's coming up and I usually drop hints. That's that's a good you know tip for the next Kahoot. We'll have two more Kahoots. And usually I drop hints between the questions. Like if you're listening in as I explain what's going on, I'm kind of giving a lead in to the next question. Ah, we tricked a bunch of people. What is P hat? P hat is a what? P hat is a sample proportion. So we won't use P hat right here. P hat would be the sample proportion. P is the true proportion. And we only change the sign. And proportions can only be between what and what. No worries, Dan, no worries, Dan. This is all for fun, it's for practice. Proportions can only be between what and what. 
proportions are only between zero and one. So when we have right here, this is the only valid one right here because it uses the true proportion and then it has a value between zero and one. I, I liked this one when I was writing it. Like this would be a really good test question in my opinion. Um, no, Tyler. <laughs> I, I knew when I was writing this one, I was like, this is gonna be really tricky because I'm gonna just mix it up. So then you've got P mixed up and P hat mixed up, and then you've got values outside of zero and one. So knowing that P is the true proportion and that proportions only can be between zero and one, we got more rights than wrong. If you say for the answer, I have an academic tone. Like, no worries, but I hope that explains this one. The leaderboard's gonna go crazy. Whoa, this is a really tight game. Um, I, Tyler, that's it. Hop on the Discord, man. Hop on the Discord, work together, study together. We're trying to make a really strong Discord. We're going to try even harder next semester. I got a little burnt out this semester. We're going to keep trying. So we're missing, might have gray hairs in the back of my head. I don't know. <laughs> next question. Let's continue on. Reject the true null is a what? Ooh, if you reviewed at the start of this, rejecting the true null is a what? Rejecting the true null is a what? So I'll, I'll give the thing again. I'll, I'll explain it at the end of this. Looks better. There we go. When we reject the true null. Nice job. So in a type one error, the null is what? In a type one error, the null is true. In a type two error, the null is false. And we fail to reject it. But you have to remember in a type one error, if the null is true, it'd be an error to reject it. In a type two error, the null is false. That's an F right there. And we fail to reject it. So these on the test are basically just memorization, but you literally, um, no, I don't know why people are getting kicked out. I do not know what's going on. I am so sorry. We'll place we in Rocky Top. Hopefully I'm very sorry, but I don't know what's going on with the internet. You still gain 40 points. So we literally had someone say to us that they were using this on the test. They were using in a type one, the null is true and a type two, the null is false and we fail to reject it. So remember, re memorize that, be ready. Here we go with the next question. Um, yeah, I know, right? I think the technology is just going crazy too. We're losing people. No, Woody Eagle versus Fuzzy Griffin versus Helpful Pelican. Pelican. Maybe pe Pelican, people are just like having, they're forcing other people to drop out. They're making it happen. True or false, finding a relationship between X and Y proves that X causes Y. There's a trick for the test. And whenever you see causes, usually on any of our tests, unless we're doing like a reverse question, if you see that X causes Y, Y causes X, or this shows causation, unless it says it doesn't show causation, the answer is gonna be false. So statistics, unless you're doing an experiment, like a designed experiment, don't show, don't show causation. So correlation is not causation. Exactly, Victoria, right there. So whenever you see the cause word, unless we're doing a designed experiment, there's very specific scenarios and statistics where we can say there, it looks like there's causation. But unless we're doing a designed experiment, we don't have good evidence of causation. So definitely right here, it is false. And let's see, and we're going to take some project questions after this. Helpful Pelican. Be quick right here. I don't know. Hopefully no one's going to lose their streak right here. But this is going to be the big one right here. Um, got 960. <laughs> Terry has that stuck in my head. Exactly. Correlation is not causation. Great job right there, Terry. I miss seeing everybody. You know, once the world gets a little more back to normal, the world gets more back to normal. Let's make it happen. Here we go with the last question. Be ready. Be quick. It's going to be another true-false question. So get ready. It's going to be another true-false. You're going to hear me say the question. Then be quick. True-false. Alpha and beta are complements. Let's find out. Oh my gosh. No. Oh man. Okay. Before we go, alpha and beta are not complements, but they are what related to each other. Alpha and beta are not complements, but they are what related to each other. Alpha and beta are not complements. So you can't say the alpha is this, beta is this. They are inversely related. Alpha and beta are inversely related. If alpha goes up, beta goes down. So alpha and beta, good job right there, Alexandra. They are inversely related, but they are not complements. You can't say alpha is this and thus beta is this. No, don't worry, Dan, don't worry. You you won't forget then. You won't forget that alpha and beta are not complements, but they are inversely related. So 
Oh man, really good stuff. Let's take, we're gonna take some project questions after this. Let's see who the winners are. That was such a close game. Like, I love it. We always do like these 30 minute cahoots. Groovy Hen in third place right here. Did Arctic Tiger make it? Helpful Pelican. And who is 10 out of 10? You earned it. Witty Eagle. Who's Witty Eagle? They can say in the chat if they want. But make sure to email me $20 Amazon gift card. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Nice job, Daniel. 10 out of 10. Perfect score right there. Amazing. I'm amazed when people get 10 out of 10. Because it's easy to make mistakes. And I think you took your time on some of them. Because if you look, Helpful Pelican was really close. Yeah, I agree. Great game right here. But you took your time and it paid off. Oh, Victoria, Victoria, how many of you won second in? Victoria, I think I think you get the $10. Email me, I'll send you a $10 Amazon gift card. Victoria, you get, because we haven't done any lately. So Victoria, you've came in second a whole bunch. So let me send you that because I don't think you've ever gotten first, right? But you've played in all of them. And so, you know, get something nice, get something on Amazon. And then Daniel, make sure to email me. What questions are there? And we're going to do, we're doing two more Kahoots and we'll do a big one. So we're gonna do the big hoot where everyone gets prizes. We'll probably do like another like 40, 20, 10 or so. So we'll do some big prizes. I was missed one at the end. No. Oh, not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. What was the so there we go. Most missed question is what was the proper alternative hypothesis? Yeah, that one really got people right there. So what question view full report? Wait, it's gonna say you've not stopped sharing screen. I don't know what to wait. What is this in? Have you stopped sharing your screen? Check your stop sharing screen between your friends. I have no idea why it says that. You got nothing to do. <laughs> you, well, we have Among Us. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if Chelsea wants to play some Among Us one of these times, but I think we should have a stats for one Among Us. I think we should do a tournament. I think we should do a stats one Among Us tournament. And that way, like if your crew are imposters, you get to continue on if you win your game. So we could keep going. I know, Andrew. We'll, we'll, I'll probably announce it through the Discord, and you might have to like join into the Discord to play. So that way, you know, like, and like, well, I don't know. I want to make sure that because I don't know if I like, don't like mute anything, but it'll be pretty fun. I can remember if I was P or P hat, even though it was only two seconds. No, I know it's so. It is pretty crazy. What is Discord? Discord is a like we have a email me Dan about this at bstevens at utk.edu on your on your UTK email. That way I know like you're a UTK student. And I'll send you uh the Discord link. Discord's basically like a group me. So think of Discord as just another group me app, but you can do voice chats on it. You can we've got rooms set up. The Discord's a little bit quieter lately because the semester's going crazy. Um, but it really helps. Oh yeah, Andrew, I totally forgot for a half second right there. Um, yeah. I'm always squinting and I put it on the wrong screen. I should have had it on this screen over here when I was playing, but yeah, that was, it, it was a lot of fun. It was like pretty crazy. It was, it was really tough. Like I, I never won as an imposter, but I did win as crew. They, they would have so known if I was an imposter. Cause if we got down to like three or four people, I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do the venting stuff really well. I just haven't played enough games as imposter to know how to sabotage stuff, how to vent stuff and everything. On part two E of the project, do you explain what each letter means as well, or just put it? Uh, you don't even have to put your numbers in, Tyler. You just have to write the equation. It's, it's that I know it's. I made it more complicated than it needs to be, but you'll just uh, write the equation. So everyone would pick you anyway, since you are the instructor. <laughs> you see, that's the problem. Well, I guess you can't. You need everyone to vote with you. But it, we had some really good games, like when we were playing. Yeah, you don't even have to explain, Tyler. You just put the equation and you're good. So if you can write on the screen like I can, you can just write the equation and you're good. And that's it. Just write the equation. You're good to go. That's it. It's We had some really good games. I got voted off like once or twice. And I got killed once or twice. It was a good mix of like, you know, we voted out the imposters a few times. The imposters won a few times. And you could tell that some people knew a lot better how to play. And it was pretty funny listening to some people when you knew they were the imposter. Imposter, like, uh, I'm trying to think. Of, I don't know. I've watched a few games of people playing. You love pointing fingers for no reason to just be like, "You're the imposter. It's totally you." I swear, that was gray hair. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, we'll we'll do one. We'll do one. I have a perfect amount of people in this stream for it. 
<laughs> I'll send out some stuff. I'm going to head off here in a little bit, but I'll send out. We're, we'll do it before the semester ends. We're totally going to do it. I'm surprised you didn't get targeted constantly for the kills on the instructor. I'm, I'm glad no one was like stream watching it. So I'm glad no one was stream watching it. I'll send out an announcement. We'll do it. We'll definitely do it before the semester ends. That is a big plan. And I'm excited, Tyler, to make the video. I'll send you the video and I'll post it to like a private link. Uh, will you send, I will send you a project later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it to me and I do a quick skim of it and I see if there's any major issues, Dan. So I don't read the whole thing because that'd be crazy. Like if I read everyone's project. Um, <laughs> I'd hope so, Victoria. I'd hope that, would, that wouldn't happen. I'd hope it'd be pretty good. But send me your projects if you want. I'll do a quick skim of them. I see if I see any major issues. But with that, any last questions? I'm going to head off here and get some dinner here in a moment. I think, I think we've done it. Exactly. We will be playing some OS. Go look up certain uh, Sparkles. Oh, Captain Sparkles. He's a YouTuber who streams it with a good, uh, with a group who is really good. He's player plays in a different way. So he, oh, I should look at that, Tyler. I should look at that. And just to learn the different styles to get better at it. I need to practice. I need to like know some strategies right here. I will check that out. Email me, send me your projects if you want. I'll take them a look over. But that's got it for now. So bye, everybody. Bye.